Let's talk about the cloud token from Sanctum. This thing, I think a lot of people are going to be very, very bullish on. And there's a few major points that you want to consider. We'll also go into how you can get some of this token at a more affordable price. Some of my personal predictions for this and why I think this is worth following. So if you don't know, the cloud token relates to Sanctum. If you don't know Sanctum, Sanctum is a liquid staking token platform or dApp on Solana. It's very, very hyped, but the hype is based on the fact that they're actually shipping really cool stuff. So as a summary, essentially, they're going to be using the LFT launch pool. And this in conjunction with the fact that they're using Meteor's Alpha Vault, which was used by Uproc. It is a successful product. However, it was used for the first time with Uproc and Uproc, the token went below what it was expected to. But these are different communities. I'm very, very bullish on Uproc long-term for sure, but we won't segue there. Basically, one bad thing about the Alpha Vault, and if you don't know what it is, you can go and put your USDC in and then everyone puts a USDC into this vault and then it buys the tokens at the first price and then it locks your tokens for a certain amount of time. But the problem with this is snipers come in, or well, they can't come in now because it's not profitable. And when they come in, they start dumping it on you, even though that sucks for you long term, it actually produces this kind of FOMO effect where people think they're doing really well. We'll go over that a little bit later as well. So this is how it works. We'll go over that in more detail. And essentially, there's going to be a lockup period. So potentially a two month cliff and a six month vest could be one month cliff, three month vest. Either way, it'd be less than 12 months. Now, in no way should it be anywhere near 12 months. But we'll go over that later. Essentially, this is just a brain dump. This is a post with a whole lot of good thoughts there. And they could essentially lock it for six months vesting. I don't think that's going to be really what people are going to be after because it's all opportunity cost. If you go and put $1,000 into this, as opposed to $1,000 into Sol, you'd want the upside on cloud to be more than the upside on Sol. You've then missed out on staking rewards compared to if you had the Sol, even if you had INF, their own token, that could go up more than the actual token. So it's just something to consider. So what they're going to be doing is they're going to be having this curve. It was going to start at five cents. Now it's going to be less than a cent. I'll go over that though, because people will be confused by that. And the goal is to hit 50 cents once all of the funds are taken from the LFG curve. So the vault will be capped at 10 million, 50% of the total USDC amount. So they're aiming to raise $20 million. That means the maximum price any vault buyer will pay is 18 cents per token, 180 million fully diluted valuation. So we'll come back to this, but let's just come through a few more posts here just so we can see how they're doing. So Sanctum in general, doing really well. They've got so much engagement on their timeline. And I do think that this has pure potential to do very well in terms of price appreciation. When it comes to the token, this will all be linked below, of course, but these are the tokenomics. So we'll just zoom in there. So it's going to be a 1 billion supply token, 30% for community. I've gone through this before, but basically for the actual launch, launch liquidity, you're looking at 18%. This 1% goes to the LFT launch pad. So remember, if you take your dupe and then if you go and vote, you're going to get 75% of this 1%. So 0.75% and then 0.5%. 25% will go to the actual dupe team. Then there's going to be a launch airdrop. We don't know the particulars on this. I hope that the launch airdrop is vested as well. So let's say I qualify for a thousand tokens. I would like to get maybe 10% initially and then have the remainder trickle out to me. That way you don't introduce all the sell pressure just immediately. Now, I don't know what they're actually going to do because they haven't given us any details yet, but they are kind of keen on that idea. So what I want to show you it's basically a price chart or a price kind of mathematical chart. So if you just go to lfg.jupe.ag, there's probably an easier way for you to find it. And then just scroll on down, click on this, see the price curve configuration in our modeling tool. So this is how we work out what the price is going to be using some complex parameters and stuff that I may have wrong because I don't have all of the details. So I've got two different prices here because in the previous tweet, he mentions this is we the initial price, but may start at a cheaper price. What we do know is it's a billion supply. Also, what we know is the total percent in the actual pool will be 8%. And we do know that they want to raise 20 million USDC. So pretty much everything looks the same. One thing that I realized that happened previously with the Uprock launch is a lot of people didn't understand vesting, cliff, and they don't understand what price you actually get the token at. So we'll go over that. This one on the right hand side, just keep in mind that that is if it starts at well and truly less than a cent. And then this one is if it starts at, well, a tenth of a cent, essentially. So 1 million USDC initial fully diluted valuation compared to something even smaller than that. Either way, you can see they still work out getting $20 million, the difference just being a couple of hundred thousand or not even that, just a small amount of money. So let's come on down here. And if you haven't seen these before, they're a little bit confusing, but they are genius. I don't know of any other blockchain that does it. We know there's going to be 80 million tokens in the liquidity pool. So how this works, and I will give you a visual shortly, but basically there'll be 80 million tokens and there'll be no USDC, and then people will go and buy the tokens and then they'll be depositing USDC. If we have a look at both these side by side, this will be the first price. $10 million is what they want to raise 
from the actual alpha vault itself, which puts it around about this amount here. So if they manage to raise $10 million and early bit of opinion, they will be able to. If they can raise $10 million, the total withdrawn amount would be like 58 or 58 to 60 million tokens. So already there would be three quarters of the tokens completely taken. And then we can see the remaining tokens, it just gets more and more expensive. So how it works is the first batch of token transfers or rather token buys will be at this price and then this price. So by the time you've got $200,000 in the USDC aspect of the liquidity pool, then the cost of the token is going to be 5 cents. By the time you get to about 1.8 million, the cost of the token will be 15 cents and then just goes higher and higher. And it's just exactly like this. This is how it works. So it doesn't really matter if it starts at 1 million market cap or lower than a 1 million market cap. It all basically works out the same. You can see the difference being just a small amount at 40 million tokens, 5 million, and it just goes up, up, up. In fact, maybe this is the actual one that they're actually keen to actually do. I don't have all of the details completely correct. Pretty sure the curvature is correct though. Now the bin step, if you don't know what that means, it's covered in my Meteor video. If I explained it here, it would take too long. So with regards to the Meteor Alpha Vault, how does this work? So this worked with UPT and USDC. If I have a look on view details, I went and put in 110 US dollars, as you can see here, basically 110 USDC, and then I could claim a certain amount of tokens. And because the vault did not completely fill up, I did not get any USDC actually returned to me. So this would actually come to me after a cliff and then a vesting schedule. So I'll prove this now and I'll get all these tokens. Now how this works is very, very simple. You go and put your USDC into the smart contract. And then let's say there's $9 million of USDC. We know that $10 million of the USDC will be allocated for the vault. So you will get all of your tokens filled and the maximum price you'll be paying will be 18 cents around that. Now, if there's more demand, let's say there's 20 million, then how it work is you're going to put in a thousand dollars. You're going to get $500 worth of tokens, and then you need 500 USDC that you can claim back. You can claim back your USDC anytime after the vault actually goes live. That's fine. And then, as I mentioned, there's a cliff and there's also a vesting schedule. So we're not going to be able to see it here because it's already been in the past, but how it works with a cliff, it essentially means that for a particular period of time, you're not getting anything. So it could be one week. For one week, you'll get zero tokens. And then you'll have a certain amount of time that they vest. As an example, let's say it's a one month cliff. For four weeks, you get nothing, zero. And then depends how it's done. But as far as I'm aware, normally what's going to happen is if it's a three month vest, you would then get a portion of the tokens the next day and then a little bit every day from then on. Another way that you can do it is essentially at the end of the first month, you then start to accumulate some of the tokens. They start to come to you and you can withdraw them just daily or weekly or monthly or whatever. And then over the next three months, they'll all unlock and you'll get them. Now, the advantage to this is pretty easy to see because essentially you can buy a token at a cheaper price and you're not going to go and pay a higher price while some sniper comes in. And how it works with the snipers is essentially they load up, let's say, $100,000 to a million dollars, something quite substantial depending on the hype of the project. They then have scripts and bots and really epic coding, to be perfectly honest. They go and spam the contract. And this spam of the contract could mean that they're putting through, I'm not sure exactly, maybe 100,000 transactions per second or something. Now, a lot of them will not land, meaning, of course, it's actually not going to buy the token at the cheap price. However, some of them will. And because you're just going there with your Soulflare wallet or your Phantom wallet, you've jumped into this, you've gone to the website, you're just clicking approve, clicking approve. You're one person with one click versus a robot with 100,000 transactions trying to push them through. So no doubt you're going to lose. Now, how it works with this alpha bot, this alpha bot is set up in such a way, I don't know how they do it, I guess some basic smart contract programming. This buys the first transaction on the actual curve. So if it has $10 million, and I'm pretty sure it will do, then it's very, very simple. But $10 million will put it around 58 million. So it's going to buy 58 million tokens straight off the bat, which means, yes, you are getting some tokens at a very small amount. However, the majority of the tokens are going to be bought at this price and then this price and then this price. And when you average it all out, as covered in this tweet, it should be around 18 cents. So the maximum price any vault buyer will pay is 18 cents. That puts the entire DAP at $180 million fully diluted valuation. And we'll cover some similar valuations on other DAPs regarding governance tokens and stuff like that towards the end. Now, remember with this LFT launch, there will be some sort of airdrop going to people that actually use the DAP. There'll also be an airdrop to people that are voting with a dupe, but that could come in July. Or if this doesn't launch soon enough, and I'm pretty sure it will, it could come in a few months time. I imagine it will come in July though. So after this is done, this vault 
does all of the thing. That's the first transaction. And we're going to have something that looks a little bit like this. Let's say the first transaction kind of buys up. Well, it says 25 cents. So it's going to buy up a little bit higher, I think, like to 30 cents or something. So it's going to buy up to here. It'll buy up all the way to here. And then people can sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. But people will probably keep on buying this up. At least my prediction is that. And after they raise $20 million, it will be 50 cents. There'll be no more tokens from the team to sell for this liquidity. Now, of course, the price of the token can go up still because there's nothing stopping that from happening because other people can sell the token at a higher price. That's completely fine. But probably what we're going to see, and it's too early to tell, but probably what we're going to see is maybe all of it goes up to 50 cents or thereabouts. But it really does depend on the airdrop. If the airdrop is unlocked all at once or in a pretty decent chunk, then there will be sell pressure just from the farmers, the people that don't believe in this long term. Now, regarding what the tokens that you're going to use for, it's kind of mentioned in here, but we essentially need more information from the team. So I'll cover token use in the future. If the token went to 50 cents, I would imagine there'd be a decent amount of sell pressure. But if it went to like $1 or something, $1 is a very nice round number. And I would think there'd be a huge amount of sell pressure. Now, if they can already prove that they're generating revenue that's decent, even if it's not shared yet with the people that actually hold the cloud token, then I think, you know, that has a far more potential and it could do better and better. Either way, it does have use within the ecosystem. It's essentially a governance token. Now, a couple of other important things to note, there'd be no centralized exchange listing fees normally quite common to spend a decent amount, maybe get your token listed with Binance, Bybit, Coinbase, OKX, etc. VCs, protocols, and sexes are all watching very closely and essentially they're trying to set the scene for future launches to make them more fair. I definitely think this is a cycle when DEXs really eat into centralized exchanges in terms of their profitability, but they're not going to like switch them. Not this cycle. It'll be the next cycle, in my opinion. Now, if you want to find out some more information, there'll be a technical deep dive, 14th of June, 2 p.m. UTC. But in the meantime, let's work out what this token is actually selling for. Now, no one knows, as far as I'm aware, what they're actually going to get in terms of an allocation because there's been nothing alluded to. So some people may have a pretty decent score in Sanctum itself. We've got a video on that. The season one's actually ended, but season two will start in the future. However, if you've got some sort of score, you're probably expecting to get an airdrop. So Wales market, you can see the price now to buy it's around 47 cents. And that's what people are saying like, hey, I would like you to buy this at this price. Whereas people are actually saying, I would be happy to buy it at this price. And of course, there's always going to be a difference between the two. But essentially, as they get closer and closer, that means there's a bit more hype around everything. Total volume on this, nothing crazy, $45,000. But you can see that other than the fact that there's been some people that have been buying at 50 cents, let's just refresh this because it says that recent trade was nine hours ago and that may be the case, but I would have expected more kind of volume than that. Either way, anyone that was kind of buying around 33 cents, I think this will be in the money. Not financial advice, just what I think will happen. Now, I'm not a big fan of pre-market perps, but if they appeal to you, then you're welcome to use them. At present, this is trading for 38 cents on Drift. And it did hit like, well, exclude this, but essentially it hit 50 cents the last time I was kind of aware or I saw some tweet showing it hit 50 cents, which I do think is a little bit risky for right now to be jumping in because if they do a launch and, you know, we're still in the crowd market, you know, like maybe the perps is probably not going to be the best move. And to be fair, the volume on this particular market is very low. So people do share the same kind of opinion. Now let's compare a couple of other governance tokens that are in the same section. Marinade is basically the OG. It is the OG liquid staking token product on Solana. And this is their governance token, fully diluted, 130 million, market cap 35. However, like if we zoom out to max, it was significantly higher, kind of the early days, $1.50. So, you know, 50 next at, and you can see that it was pretty decent. BSOL and Blaze, that are connected, market cap, well, the fully diluted valuation, 7 million. Once again, this went through a little bit of a crazy spiel, and now it's kind of come on down. This is far smaller in terms of liquid staking tokens. It uses the same smart contracts, essentially, as like Jito Sol and the main ones, but it's not as big. Then we have JTO, which is from Jito Sol. Jito Sol is, just to be clear, it is my favorite liquid staking token. And also, although I love Sanctum and we're talking about Sanctum right now. There is a lot of liquidity in this market and liquidity begets liquidity, meaning it attracts more and more liquidity. Market cap, decent. The fully diluted valuation, massive. So for Sanctum to go to 500 million fully diluted, that would be completely possible because remember, there's only going to be 18% that's actually on the market. So if we say, as an example, it was 20%, then that's a 100 million as a market cap, which is certainly believable. Now, the GOAT when it comes to liquid staking tokens that are governance is LidoDAO, LDO. This is on Ethereum and relates to Ethereum staking. And this went a little bit crazy in the last cycle as well. I guess nothing too crazy, to be honest. It's only really down 72%. I guess that's still pretty decent. Either way, LidoDAO is essentially, you know, who you want to be in terms of 
your token price appreciation. Now, what should you actually be doing right now? So if we jump into Wonderland with this tutorial wallet, you can see I've got some Sanctum pets. Some people have decided to go and take their pets and sell them for something else or go and do whatever they want. You can do what you like because at the moment there's no points appreciation. What you may be keen to do, and this may require another tutorial, but go to trade and then let's go and take, as an example, some Jupsol. And we'll go and receive some VSOL, max and buy some VSOL. Just double check the prices are pretty much the same because we don't want to lose anything here. Proven our wallet, we're going to get some VSOL. So it's still a liquid staking token that's connected with Sanctum. While that transaction is going through, I'll show you their Twitter. This is it here, the vault on Solana. This is a stake pool. So it's still staking your Solana, which is good. Then we'll go to their website, the vault.finance, stake now, connect the wallet, sell flare, connect. Now what you can do if you just have some normal soul is you can go and stake it into VSOL or you can come up here and then click on direct stake and then you can go and delegate to your validator or in my case the validator I'm after validator.com so we'll go and find validator.com down here direct stake and we can direct stake any VSOL that we have so we're going to prove this and this will come here then as a next step come back up here and then go points and rewards and then go into the vault soul and then click max and go and add this VSOL into the vault. That means we're now getting VPTS points. Don't know what they're for, but maybe some airdrop from the vault.finance in the future. And it's just one thing that you can do right now if you want to try and continue with this kind of game of getting more points. Now, what's the next step for Sanctum? Well, I think James Hanley, I, I feel like this guy should be part of the community or work for Sanctum. Because what Sanctum's trying to do, they're very connected with the Jupiter team. I think a couple of the team members are Singaporean. Jupiter team is predominantly Singaporean. And so there's a bit of a crossover there. And I think they're trying to create the Jupe effect because the Jupe effect does well. So what I really would like to see is maybe James could help. Maybe he could lead the community or something like that because he's putting up these really epic explainer whiteboards that just give us a good amount of information. And on top of that, he's also given suggestions for the tokenomics because FP Lee requested just a community in general for information and opinions and FUD and pros and cons on tokenomics. And he then goes and breaks them all down. So what I think would be good is if James was working with Sanctum, maybe they can work together in some capacity. And then if all this stuff could be put out in such a way that people just understand exactly what's going on with Sanctum, with every aspect as they work it all out. Because at the end of the day, this will be the second biggest governance token, in my opinion, with JTO and Jito Soul just being the biggest. Potentially in the future, this could even flip JTO. It's a competitive landscape out there. Maybe that could happen. Anyway, right now we don't have a launch date. We don't have a few things as well, but I will be putting some USDC into that vault. I do expect it to be oversubscribed. Maybe there's about 15 million or something like that. So I think I'm going to get some of my USDC back and probably as a sweet spot, maybe like a one month cliff and then three months vesting. That's about as sweet as it could be. Or ideally just you've got all your tokens within three months. Anyway, that's all for this video. Let me know your thoughts on cloud below. Catch you in the next video.